Thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com, home of technical analysis, education in both the stock market and cryptocurrency worlds. See the links in the description of this video for more information on our two courses, entries and exits on the fundamentals of technical analysis, as well as our new course on trading cryptocurrency strategy. Purchase both and receive a 20% off bundle discount. Thanks for checking us out. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Hello, crypto friends. Checking in on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Not a whole lot going on today. The bears are establishing a little bit more control. Before I get into it, just want to get up on my soapbox for a bit and say some opinions that I have. Just because there are people out there, some newer traders that, you know, you get really excited. You're learning technical analysis. You love trading. You love that feeling. And it's really hard to slow things down when the trading opportunity slows down. And I've talked about this in the past, but I just want to reiterate the point where patience is very, very key in this market. And if we try and do the same amount of trading consistently week after week, we're going to give back money by forcing trades. We have to strike when the iron is hot and strike when there is volatility and strike often, but slow down and knowing when to turn it off. And that's that's part of controlling emotions because that feeling, that rush, it's not one of those negative emotions. It's one of those positive ones. It's part of that euphoria and that gambling, that little win streak that feels really good. And that's what we're trying to pursue along with money, which is directly tied to that feeling. That's what we're trying to pursue when we're trading. So being able to dial that back is almost telling your brain, no, we're not going to give you that little drug right now that's going to release that dopamine and have you feel real good. We're going to have to put that at bay and be patient while waiting for another opportunity to present itself. And that's why I like technical analysis so much, because it is universally applied to anything that you can trade. If you can get a chart on it, you can trade it. So for me, it helps me to be patient a lot when I can be trading other things. So I have my capital in, in stock accounts and I have my capital in crypto accounts and I play back and forth depending on what's going on. So this week I made money in Tesla options. I made money in Canadian MJ, but I'm slowing down my trades. And back when the market was on fire in, in the summer, I was trading at some days, you know, five times a day and I was waking up every two hours and I was, I completely changed my lifestyle to, to attack that opportunity because I knew that opportunity wouldn't last to the de degree that we were seeing it. So I've shifted that now I'm, I'm getting a more complete night's sleep and I'm making one trade this week. I made one trade every two, every other day, pretty much. So scaling way back. And the reason that I can do that is because I am you know, hitting weekly goals or whatever I'm doing by trading stocks and doing other things. Another thing that we need to be doing in this downtime is learning and never, you know, turning off that desire to be learning things. So whether you're newer to technical analysis and you're going over courses or going over videos or looking more in depth, playing around with indicators that, you know, let's see how Ichi clouds work or let's see what this Fibonacci levels are all about and just playing around with them and looking at them on the charts. The more you look at the charts and the more you recognize patterns, the more those patterns will pop out to you. So not only can we be educating ourselves in that way, way, but for me personally, I'm educating myself, just expanding my knowledge with the sector. We had a former chart guys member who left the chart guys to create his own venture where he is in the trucking industry. And I was very unaware of how big the trucking industry was until you look at the numbers and I don't have them offhand, but the trucking industry in the United States is such a massive industry. And he's creating something that is called, his company is Trans Risk, and they're creating an instrument that is going to be able to measure volatility in the pricing of trucking. So what that's going to allow truckers and carriers and uh, shippers to do is to hedge against risk. So if they buy some of this instrument, which hasn't started trading yet, he's actually on CNBC today at 2, 10 p.m. Eastern to talk about this, uh, but it's it doesn't exist right now. It exists for the shipping industry uh, across the Baltic Sea. It doesn't exist in trucking. So what it's going to allow people to do is hedge against risk, and that risk is you know weather or unseen events, and to buy this instrument that will increase when those unknown events and things like that happen. So although you may be losing money with your shipping, you're hedging against that because this instrument would be going up. And uh, there's definitely a lot more into it than that. That's just a very basic rundown. But I'm you know, following along with his company as they are just launching. And he's, this is going to be a very significant multi-million dollar company that's going to be changing the trucking industry. He's also implementing blockchain. He is a huge blockchain supporter. And that's going to be, he's trying to change the trucking industry and he's creating an alliance with a bunch of big names where they are going to change the trucking industry, in my opinion. And so I'm just watching this all from the sideline, just, you know, have a personal connection with him 
from uh, day trading with the chart guys and watching this all play out. But I'm going to be, I know that in the future, I'm going to make money on this instrument trading the trucking industry. And I don't know much about the trucking industry. I'm learning now. And I know that if I have any questions, he's definitely going to uh, he's, he's a great guy and he'll happily share information about that, but I'm going to be making money off of this in the future. So I'm now preparing for it now so that I will be ready when it begins trading. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Our entire trading careers is constantly trying to look into the future. What's the next thing? What can I be educating myself on and how can I be better prepared in the future? So that's pretty much my spiel. Also waiting, just patiently waiting. Right now, I'm only trading the big three bullish. So I'm patiently waiting for new exchanges. The exchanges we have right now are very, very basic. Any stock trading broker blows the features out of any cryptocurrency trading platform out of the water. Fidelity Active Trader Pro, if I could do that with cryptocurrencies, I'd be trading twice as much because I would be able to be trading bearish and I'd be able to be trading altcoins. So I'm just patiently waiting. I'm not comfortable on other exchanges with you know certain amounts of capital. I'm not... Uh, looking to be shifting my money around always. I want a I want one of the big boy companies that is going to do this to release a really sufficient uh, trading platform that's going to allow me to short. It's going to allow me to place conditional orders. It's going to allow me to place buy orders and stop loss orders at the same time. It's just going to be a much more trader friendly service. And these are the the early adopters right now. The names that we have, including Coinbase, and you know, just wait till these brokers that have hundreds of millions of dollars to throw at this, wait till they come out with uh, their system that they're going to be using. It's going to blow these ones out of the water. So patiently waiting for that as well. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Bitcoin, I pointed out in a previous video to be watching out for the potential that if we do not get this Amazon news, which was very, very unlikely, that we were likely to pull back and that would give us the potential head and shoulders bearish reversal pattern setup. So again, we're just keeping our eye on this pattern. It's playing out as it would if this pattern were going to ring true. So I'm watching this neckline of support. We have our left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. This is our lower high now, 6,000 on the dot. Now, if we break this higher low, that's at 53.77, break that level, we then have a lower high and a lower low on the daily time frame for the first time in a very long time. That has not happened in months and months and months. So really since the last major pullback where we had this lower high and lower low. So that's what we're keeping an eye out for. I'm not making any trades based around that, but I know to be patient, the four hour time frame, you can see it a bit more clearly, left shoulder, head, right shoulder as we're coming down. And I do believe we're close to a trigger point that is going to lead to another leg down where we had this clear bear break this morning. We had a double top. We had a, a higher low. As soon as this level of 5805 broke, let's put that line there. But as soon as that did break, that was the bears taking over and we dumped. We're seeing a fairly weak bounce attempt at this point. It's a potential bear flag. A bear flag is when you have your all out dump. That line doesn't mean anything. It's just re representing that dump. And then you have the parallel support and resistance lines <clears throat> on a weak bounce attempt and it leads to lower lows. That's the pattern. So if we do break this low, a double low down here of 5,700 essentially, and if we break that, we're going to see another leg down. And I do believe that the hourly RSI, if this were to play out, would be approaching oversold. So there were some nice gains to be had on this oversold bounce. Again, there is trading opportunity here. The 15-minute RSI got into the low 20s, and the 5-minute RSI got down into the single digits. If Bitcoin's RSI is down in the single digits on the 5-minute and other time frames are oversold as well, and there's no news to cause this, you know we're going to bounce in the near term. It's very com comfortable getting in on an oversold bounce. So we ended up going from 57.08 all the way up to 57.90. Even if you capture half of that move, you know, for $45 should be worthwhile for a trade because even if you're just adding up these small base hits, there's not much else you can do on days like this if you're only playing bullish. So this is a fairly weak bounce attempt, which is why I'm not interested in any entries here and watching for this potential breakdown, the bear flag. And if we break 5,700, the next level is down at 54.43. There are a, a few support levels before that neckline at that head and shoulders pattern, but breaking 5,700 would increase the odds. Again, I'm always looking for odds where what are the odds that we're going to see that pattern follow through and we're going to break down and lose the higher low pattern on daily. Whatever those odds are in my head right now, they are going to shift for more likely to happen when we do break 5,700 if that does play out. Ethereum is still extremely tight, but favoring the bears. We had one green day. We have now seen four, eight, 12 of 13 days have been red. And we have DevCon 3 coming up for Ethereum. That's a potential 
thing to look out for for some you know hype uh, by the rumor kind of deal looking for maybe some news to come out during that uh, meeting conference but you don't want to be in ethereum right now there's no reason to be there's nothing telling us to be in ethereum we keep seeing lower highs incrementally we're just trading sideways look at this hourly time frame nothing going on in this range here just tightening up higher lows lower highs a clear bear break when bitcoin dumped it took ethereum with it we have this weak bounce attempt i call it weak because we have declining bull volume we haven't even made back that one hourly bear candlestick where we dropped four plus dollars and i would anticipate a lower high on this bounce attempt and then to trade around this range for a while. Hourly RSI, not really close to oversold at this point. Daily chart, there's just not really anything that's saying bulls are showing up. It's a, a scenario where the I have to say, okay, bulls, prove it to me that you have momentum. Show me some volume, show me something. And they're not showing me anything. Look at this really low bull volume on every green four-hour candlestick. It's low volume. So it's worth keeping an eye on Ethereum, but there's just nothing telling me that I should be looking for a bullish entry at this point. Checking out Litecoin. Litecoin on the daily time frame, also very tight. We've had a little bit of a bounce, but it's still mostly the daily charts are dominated by the bears over the past couple of weeks in Ethereum and Litecoin. The four hour time frame, we had a bit of a fake out on Litecoin, and I actually was suckered into it. I had a, a losing trade today where I was looking at, let me see where our timing is at. So Litecoin, I was looking at the 15 minute time frame earlier today, and right here is where it got me. So we had our, our dump and our low, high of the bounce, higher low, and then we broke to higher highs here. So I made an entry just under uh, $56, and we did see a little bit more follow through up to 56.15, certainly not significant. I was only looking for 50 cents, but we didn't get it. But then Bitcoin dumped, and this was a clear technical bull break. But because of the correlation to Bitcoin, when Bitcoin dumped, it completely erased this move and flushed all supports and it broke them. So it just, or actually not all supports, 55 is still a key support level, but it flushed down and completely erased this move. I was stopped out when the 15 minute higher lows broke. And then I said, all right, that's that for the morning. I don't see any more bullish trade. So I'm going to head on over and trade Canadian MJ, which made back those gains and then a little bit. So Definitely having that volatility to, or the uh, versatility to jump around to other markets. You know, you can trade gold or oil. You can put any kind of trading instrument in front of me and I can know nothing about it. And because I'm comfortable with technical analysis, I'm comfortable trading that. We could trade uranium from an asteroid, you know, anything that it could be that I could know zero about the technology. There are times in my stock trading career where I don't know what the company does. I don't know the name of the company. I'm looking at a ticker, I'm looking at the price levels, and I'm trading it only based on that. So that's why knowing and being comfortable with technical analysis opens the doors to so many more opportunities, not just in the crypto space, and allows you to jump around if you want to be a trader. And that's why I'm always cautious. People ask me, you know, how long do I have to study until I can do this full time? Well, if you're only focusing on crypto, I would say you don't ever want to quit your job to trade crypto full time because we are going to enter periods of bearish markets where we have, you know, like I keep saying, there are going to be times where there's weeks in a row, months in a row of, of nothing going on for the bulls. And unless, you know, capitalizing on bearish trading, then there's not going to be opportunity for you to make consistent income and be able to you know, provide for yourself and your family if that is your only source of income, the cryptocurrency space. So Litecoin is weak and it's tied to Bitcoin like an anchor when Bitcoin pulls back. And of course, it didn't see much upside and neither did Ethereum when Bitcoin was running on the potential for Amazon uh, rumors, which was yesterday. Well, you can see we had a, a dump and then a, a attempt to turn things around, higher lows and higher highs, and now we're just forming lower highs and lower lows. We do still have this key support at 55. I would say the bulls have some hope as long as that holds. If we break 55, I'm looking down at 53.77 as the next level, and bulls need to break 56.15 to try and regain some momentum in their favor. So again, not big moves, not big volatility, and it's a double-edged sword because if you want adoption of the cryptocurrency space in mainstream, you know, everyday world life, you don't want this volatility. You want Bitcoin to chill out because nobody is going to use Bitcoin with this volatility that it has. You want it to move like the dollar. The dollar making a percent move is a big deal. Bitcoin making a 5% move in a day is not really a big deal. So that has to change if we want this widespread adoption. If that changes, day trading and short-term trading these cryptocurrencies is no longer going to be as lucrative as it has been. So double-edged sword, but we'll see how it all plays out. And the great news will be there will always be something to trade and always another way to make the market 
or make money in the market, whatever market that is. So I appreciate you listening. I hope you have a good weekend. We will see you soon. We'll be going live Sunday at about 8 p.m. Eastern to talk about the five new indicators we're launching with the alert system and to go over some uh, changes and upgrades we've made there. See you soon.